me, please, Dad. This is security camera video from Tuesday night, July 5th, 2011. At about 8.30, outside the Fullerton Transportation Center, Fullerton police stopped 37-year-old Kelly Thomas for questioning. He was schizophrenic and for the most part lived on the street. Thomas resisted being searched. I can't breathe, Kelly Thomas died five days later of injuries caused by police. Two of the officers were put on trial. There was a verdict on January 12, 2014. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Manuel Anthony Ramos, not guilty of the crime of felony. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, J. Patrick Cicinelli, not guilty of the crime of felony to it. Not guilty. The verdicts and the emotions they bring. This, the scene, Superior Court, Orange County. The former Fullerton cops, Manuel Ramos and Jay Cincinnati, cleared of any wrongdoing in the beating and the death of the mentally ill homeless man, Kelly Thomas. They got away with murdering my son. It's just not fair, so I guess, I guess it's legal to go out and kill now. So what this means is all of us need to be very afraid now. It's carte blanche for police officers everywhere. Can beat us, kill us, whatever they want, because it has been proven right here today. They'll get away with it. They'll get away with it. The trial centered around this violent video, July 2011. The beating of Kelly Thomas at the hands of Fullerton cops. At times, you could hear Thomas crying out for help. The prosecution built its entire case on this video, saying it amounts to to watching a murder. The eight women and four men of the jury saw it differently, just like another case I know you'll remember. Listen. I've been laying awake at night for many, many nights, uh, reliving the O.J. trial all over again, seeing Johnny Cochran and O.J. just smile and, and, and do what uh, Schwartz and Cincinnati just did. The case tried in open court by the OCDA himself, Tony Rakakis. He told the jury the ex-cops abused their authority. The defense, arguing the homeless man Kelly, became violent and the force used was reasonable. Eight hours of deliberations later, and the jury rules it's reasonable force and they had no malice in their hearts. They were not out to get somebody that night. They were working. And I believe we had a fair trial. We put all of the evidence that we had in front of the jury, and they made, they made their decision. Good Sunday morning, everybody. It's with mixed feelings that um, we have Ron Thomas with us. Mixed feelings because uh, over the three years, uh, getting on to four years, uh, he is one of the most honorable human beings I have ever in life met. Uh, but we never would have met if you had not lost your son. That's, so, that's very true, Tony. It's very, yeah. Where do things stand now? Well, where they stand, stand now is um, the feds have not yet stated whether they're going to uh, go after these, these guys on civil rights violations. So there's still the opportunity there, and uh, I'm hopeful that they do. Um, I still have a civil case coming up, uh, and that's where we'll find out the real truth. A lot of... A lot of truth can come out where it wasn't allowed in the criminal mm -hmm. case. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this uh, civil suit uh, to happen so we can all really learn it. And all the officers, by the way, and former chiefs of police have all taken depositions now. So we're going to hear actually from them speak on the stand where we couldn't in that criminal trial. Mm -hmm. um, it's a common problem, juries, for reasons that I suppose make legal sense. There, there is evidence sometimes that is withheld from them. Um, but did anyone interview the jurors after this? Uh, were they, first of all, was there any sort of a split between them before they came to a unanimous verdict? And, and did anyone talk to them about some of the stuff that was not presented? Well, you know, they came back pretty quick. Yeah. which was surprising. They came back really quick. It's about uh, eight hours, I think, something like that? Yeah, it, it was almost nothing. That included their instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like they had their minds made up immediately. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that's not right. But as far as evidence that could not be presented, uh, because of the Peace Officer Bill of Rights, exactly. the, we can't, as citizens, can't even know if these officers were terminated from the department, only that they no longer work for the city. Well, we all know they were fired. We all know they were fired for Sorry, not following policy and procedures and doing all that. But none of that could be admitted into the criminal trial. Mm -hmm. But however, they could bring up anything and make up, and they did, anything they want about my son and use it. Double standard. Yeah, I feel my son did not get a, a fair trial. Do you know what's happened to all of those individuals? We know that they're no longer with Fullerton PD, but do you know what's happened to them? Well, Joseph Wolf, the one that first hit Kelly, um, he stays pretty well hidden. I don't know what's going on with him. Ramos was working construction with some buddies of his. 
I know that Cincinnati got a job as a postal carrier in Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, uh, you know, they're going about their lives and uh, enjoying holidays and families, you know, just like any other citizen. And uh, to me, that's despicable. Yeah. Um, I don't want to offend anybody who may be watching by what I'm going to ask you now, but it, it does represent a reality uh, amongst a lot of, in a lot of law enforcement circles. Um, where you live, if you had a uh, break-in, if you had a robbery, something like that, how long would it take police officers to show up? Well, you know, they, I, I, I live you know in, what I'm getting at. I, I do, I do, uh, exactly. And uh, I live in, in uh, Orange County in Cyprus, and the police department there, um, they're very open to me. I have good friends on there that are sergeants. Uh, I have open communications with the chief there. Now, some of the officers do avoid me. They just don't want the possibility of uh, saying, doing something wrong. Maybe they're not sure what will happen. Uh, but, you know, there, there's no better supporter of law enforcement than me. Uh, and I support them completely. I actually had, uh, a few months ago, uh, there was a burglar in my backyard about 6 in the morning. I didn't know it, but the, the whole neighborhood was canvassed with, with police officers looking for this guy. And uh, I was very glad that they were there. And mm -hmm. I, I, I helped uh, uh, in detaining him uh, for the officers. So I'm, 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 I'm good with them. However, there are a good number of officers that won't give me the time of day. And if they did, it probably wouldn't be very polite. Yeah. You know, turn, turn their shoulder on me completely. Yeah. And again, you have two people here who are very supportive of law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, but the reality is... That's one of the reasons, you, know, you talk about the, the thin blue line, that's one of the reasons why so often there's a code of silence in law enforcement because if you l roll over on a fellow officer, uh, the next time that you put out an officer needs assistance call, it's going to be a while before anybody shows up. Absolutely, and that's, that's, that's the absolute truth uh, to that. Um, you know, I've heard a lot. I can't talk about the depositions. I do know that officers who have been very good to me uh, have said one thing when it came time to deposition uh, and what's coming up, they've held back mm -hmm. for that very reason. Mm -hmm. They come out with the truth and what they've been telling me all along, then they're shunned and how long will their backup come, yeah. if at all. Yeah, yeah. All right, we should move on from there. Uh, you, have you seen any differences in the way Fullerton PD operates, especially with respect to homeless people? Absolutely. I've, I've worked real closely with the city manager, Joe Phelps, and with Dan Hughes, who was a captain. Now he's the full-time chief, and uh, we work real good together. Uh, they now have four full-time homeless liaison officers, or they didn't before. They, they had one part-time. They have a full-time CIT member, that's a crisis intervention team member, mm -hmm. who rides with them, and that's from the county, assigned to the homeless liaison officers. Um, the homeless, I talk to them, and they say, you know, we're actually you know, respected. They, they, they're not hitting us anymore. Uh, they talk to us. They try and get us help. Major changes. I remember a city council meeting I went to because of complaints the homeless had, and I brought it forward. Again, I'm, I'm as well as others, are the voice for those that don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I said, and, and what are your officers doing, because Chief Hughes was there, what are your officers doing waking people up with a baton? You're assaulting them with deadly weapons. Stop it. They did. They stopped it. And the homeless are so happy because they can just be talked to. <laughs> Major changes. Uh, the homeless liaison officers are, are a big plus. Uh, policies and, and procedures have been uh, changed dramatically. Not only every officer in the Fullerton PD, but every employee of the Fullerton PD that may come in contact with the public um, has been through crisis intervention training on how to deal with the homeless and mentally ill. That's major. Those mm -hmm. are huge steps for the better. None of this brings Kelly back, but is there some sense of accomplishment? There is because what myself and others are doing um, by insisting on change is saving and helping all the other Kelly Thomases that are out there. And we all know one somewhere, yeah. making it better for other people. It doesn't bring him back. But I made a promise to Kelly that um, I would do everything I could to correct the wrongs that were in place that allowed him to be killed. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna keep doing it. What's it like for you to hear the video uh, from that night, to hear him calling for you? It tears me up. Still? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, it tears me up. Just prior uh, to us meeting this afternoon, I was watching a clip that's out there, and uh, I haven't for a while. Um, and it just goes right through me. Just, just, it's, it's horrible uh, for me. You know, we, uh, we've got a break coming up. Why don't we take it a little bit early, and then we'll have more time to talk when we come back. We'll be right back.